Hey, hey, people. Seth here. I'm just kidding. I'm not Seth, but I'm some guy, and I've got a pretty good video game to tell you about. <coughs> it's been in development for about a full decade, and I've spent a considerable portion of my life watching it grow from a humble and aspiring project to a full, enthralling, and classic zombie apocalypse experience. I'm talking about Project Zomboid. And, as of a couple months ago, Build 41 got released into beta, and it is so fucking good. Oh my god. It's got cooking, it's got carpentry, it, <coughs> it has fucking cars, it, it's got a fully interactable with world, welding masks, it has, you can see the bags on your back now, it's a it is chock full of content for you to explore before your untimely death. Because Project Zomboid is the story of how you died. Literally, those are the words you're gonna read when you start a new character. So it's okay to die in the learning process. In fact, you can even create a new character on one of your old save files. Hey, look, that's the save file from uh, the Escape from Lags by Prison video. I don't need that shit anymore. Oh no. Oh god, no. <clears throat> one of the typical lives in this game looks like a frantic attempt to scavenge while maintaining the classic zombie rules. Don't get bit, deal damage to the brain, and don't get bit. Because, by default, a zombie's bite transmits the virus, and if you get bit or even scratched, there's a really good chance that you'll start feeling queasy, and you can imagine what happens when you get sick. But if you manage to get a foothold in the world, then the game turns from a frantic dash from zombies to the rural living simulator. You're gonna lose your fucking power and your fucking water, and you're gonna have to make a new life. And it's fun. Here's the red squirrel, feeding on spruce cone. There's a little seed in each petal of the cone, and uh, that is what he is uh, feeding on. He picks the petal, and, and he sorts out that little seed. The game takes place in Knox County, Kentucky in the 90s. Your sleepy community's phone lines went down a couple days ago, and people have suddenly started getting sick. Overnight, the military sets up a perimeter around the county as corpses begin to rise and attack the living. Guess how effective the military was at holding this in. With one man climbing a tree to feed the birds, the troop commander gave up, admitting that he could no longer control himself or his men. Within the game map are several towns, small communities, and countless places of interest. For the sake of this video, though, let me show you a slice of life in the suburbs of Muldraw. Welcome to Courtland Medical. While it once was home to the town doctor, it's now home to the town me. This once was a waiting room and lobby area. Now an empty stage with tactically placed broken glass. The staircase is barricaded, and any entry on the ground floor is barred. Instead, you want to climb the sheet rope and phase through the roof. Welcome to my personal bedroom, which is apparently secure. And this is my ridiculous horde. I've been locked in an arms race to grow my storage to accommodate the entire suburban resource base I've been conglomerating into a, a single room. It's hard to tell myself I don't need more things, but Daddy always wants more metal sheets. Always. Back here is my farm. In the first few weeks of the end of the world, I made sure to grab as many cans of food as possible, just to invalidate that decision with potatoes that grow from the fucking ground. Genius. Meet my serfs, Richard and Jessica. They're a product of a surprisingly functional NPC mod called Superb Survivors. They live here in exchange for safety and food. These brainless individuals have been my gateway to understanding the 1% because, despite having more resources than I could ever reasonably consume, I still feel compelled to feed them purely cabbages and edible grasses in order to preserve my ridiculous wealth. Luckily, it's been raining constantly for the past couple weeks, so my laborers have had to do jack shit except somehow plant potatoes over my boardwalk. So, I don't have to feel guilty that the lower level undesirables aren't living as bougie as a class upstairs. I don't know what kind of disgusting economic system this is, but I know that everyone's happy. This game does a lot of things really well, like creating a paranoid, intense atmosphere. Another thing it does well is making cooking incredibly satisfying. I mean, just look at this shit. Oh, 
Okay, maybe that didn't do the satisfaction justice, but I swear every time I cook in this game, I want to play multiplayer and not eat and, and just make food for people. It's so good. Other than food, one of your greatest resources in Project Zomboid are random books and magazines, oftentimes with articles on how to not fucking die out in the wild. And to find the most valuable ones, oftentimes you have to risk your life in order to go... Wait a minute. I did not kill those zombies. Fuck's going on here? Alright, fuck the simulation. I'm gonna LARP a Dark Souls character now. <laughs>